Recording. Yes? Yes. Like they're getting your voice on there, Jane. <laughs> okay, so what we're doing now is looking at pelvic alignment, and this will combine in with uh, an assessment, an overall postural assessment for your client, taking in all other joints uh, and positions of posture. And of course, the angle of the pelvis, in terms of being an anterior or posterior tilt, will have a profound influence on their overall spinal alignment. So the bony prominences that we want to show you on the skeleton to start with, that we are going to be measuring against, are both the PSIS, the posterior superior iliac spine, and the ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine. So if we take the posterior one first of all, this is the harder one to find. If I just turn the skeleton a little bit so that you can see this prominence, and what we're looking at here is this bony prominence here. And as you can see, this continues up across the iliac crest. And this is sometimes where a little bit of confusion may be caused, where you may be palpating a little bit too high. So there are other landmarks that we can look for that will help you find this particular prominence and make sure that we're in the right place. One of them is the spinous processes of the lumbar spine. So you can see them coming down here, finishing with L5. Hopefully you should be able to palpate these and distinguish the difference between coming off L5 and down onto that gap and the sacrum. And the other is the gluteal crease that you'll be able to observe superficially, which is about here. So you can see one is just above and one will be just below that horizontal line spanning the two PSISs. So that's an easier way to line them up and know that you're in exactly the right position. The other way that you can do to confirm this with your client is to just get them to flex their spine and as you're holding this position you'll find that these prominences are a little bit easier to palpate as they flex forward. The anterior superior iliac spine is this bony prominence here. And again, although it's very evident and easy to find, one just needs to make sure that you are on the most anterior point there and neither too high nor too low. If you palpate just below that, you'll be coming down onto the origins of sartorius. And of course, with the client standing, this muscle will be very tight. And if you're not careful, you may confuse or may be confused between the tightness of that muscle and actually being on bone. So just a little bit of a, a push, a depression into that muscle will indicate to you that you're on muscle tissue. Just come up a little bit superiorly to that and make sure you're on that bony prominence. Once we have those two clearly identified, from a side position, you will have a finger on each and you will then assess what that angle is between those two bony prominences and an imaginary horizontal line spanning from the PSIS. The alignment should be for males 10 to 15 degrees from horizontal and for females just a slightly more greater anterior tilt with 15 to 20 degrees. So if the alignment is less than that it will indicate that the pelvis has rocked backwards so we're in a posteriorly tilted position and that will normally indicate that the hamstrings are short and the hip flexors are long. And of course, if the angles are greater than those margins that we've just given you, it will indicate an anterior tilt. That will tend to cause a lordotic spine, long hamstrings and short hip flexors.